Hey everyone, you guys are back with Amanda at Butcher Bee and Art, and I promised you guys a video this week, and, well, I promised it last week, of these type gems, and my apologies, I didn't get around to it, there were a bunch of things that got in the way, but I have it for you now. And these are based with the Derwent Ink Tents, Derwent Ink Tents pencils down here on the bottom and then I covered them over with polychromos in order to get the gem effect so I'll show you how I did this now I really liked my favorite I also did this one over here I'll show you this one I did this one too um now my favorite one out of these was this one and so I wanted to do that one for you guys to show you how I did it and what I did was I took the I only have the little 12 pack of the Derwent Intense which are these pencils this is the deep indigo they're made in England they're very well made and I don't know if you heard but that's thunder outside cool it's about to have a storm Okay, and so I kind of had like agate patterns in my head when I did the bottoms of these or what I would think of like as the bottoms and the bases of the gem because I think of them in like layers, one, two, three, four, five, or whatnot. And so I just do patterns on the bottoms of the gems like the first layer I guess and I mean you could do any kind of pattern you want like with some of the others that I've done I've done um, circles and I've done squares and I've done lots of squiggles because I like squiggles and so that would be our base and then because these are basically um, watercolor pencils except that it's much more permanent um, because they're actually ink um, I just went over them with a paintbrush and eh, this is not the best paintbrush to do it with I prefer one that's a little bit stiffer so that I can move it around a little bit better Ooh, got some water on there yeah and it's just damp enough to get this moving so that I get like some really cool effects from it. Just wash it around like that. I'm sure you could do this with um, watercolor pencils. You might even be able to get like the bottom cool look with some cool markers maybe. I don't know. I've only really played around with ink tents since those are the ones I have and I'm not really a fan of watercolor pencils because I haven't found any really really great ones that I'm like in love with but I tried Derwent Intense and I really like them because they're very pigmented and awesome so so I think that gives it like a really cool because it's like variations of colors like I said, you might be able to get this with like markers or just really cool watercolor pencils if you have watercolor pencils. Um, so there's that, and that's basically it. And then you're just going to do a gem on top of it. And so I'll show you my gem. Um, I'm going to start with my darkest, which is a polychromos. Uh, this is deep red. Yeah, dark red. Not deep. Dark. Deep and dark. Scary. Um, and so I'm just going to go around my edges. As you can see, I'm using one of the Zentangle tiles, which are decently thick. They're like cardstock, except better. And so it doesn't take long for them to kind of just absorb and dry, which is awesome. And they're also really, really smooth in the sense that you can do 
really quick shading and it still will smooth out really really well or blending I should say not shading blending and it will smooth out still really really well so I'm just going to go along here and then this is my shadow and where it's going to be at the top of my gem I'm just moving it around so it's easier to color and I usually go down and give it some edge down here even though you don't have to I do And this is just our first layer. So just kind of go over it like that. And then I'm going to bring in my second color for some really pop. This is Pale Geranium Lake. Basically, it's a bright red. Okay? I don't know who named these, but I should probably be punched. Because seriously, Pale Geranium Lake. Geranium's a flower. There are no flower lakes. It's bright red, okay? Okay. So, this is our second color. And then, I just want to bring it down here in like a light layer. And then for the bottom and the very translucent-esque effect, I've got cream, which is just cream. Thankfully, they don't have weird names on this one. But just cream. And then I just went down over here. And the cool thing is that, um, you know, yellows and reds make orange, which is the exact complementary color of blues. And since it's a really dark blue and really, like, really light orange, it works okay. And it doesn't turn to mud because it's not actually blending together. So, that's a good thing. they're on top of each other and they don't blend which is what you want and I'm gonna take our light red or our bright red just pale geranium lake seriously weird name and go over it and then I'm gonna get one of my little paper blending stump thingies clean it off here real quick Just paper stamp by itself. I found that on the Zentangle tiles and such, I don't actually need blending medium. Like, you can just do it like this. You can use the blending medium, it works really, really well. Okay, maybe we might just to like help it even out. Okay, my blending medium is um, mineral spirits, odorless mineral spirits. And for the sake of making this video and quickly blending things, we shall use this. Um, in case you didn't know, the um, blending, the odorless mineral spirits, what it does is it actually like melts the binder that holds the pigment in place of the colored pencil and then you're moving around the pigment and then it stays like basically like ingrained in the paper but you're not as long as you're not pushing like really hard with this and um, you're not hurting the tooth of the paper so you can do like tons and tons of layers which is really cool okay and so I want to go back in with my cream because I don't feel like there's enough of it. And just go over it. And it's like, you can't hear it, but after you've done the first blending, like, with the spirits, um, like, it's super, super smooth. And it's really weird. Like, it doesn't not take any more color or anything like that. It does, obviously. But it's like super smooth and you don't have to blend again. It's really cool. And then let's get our like bright red. And this is our second layer, basically. 
and it just looks so awesome. And of course, you can blend as many times as you want and do as many layers as you want in order to make it look the way you would like it to look. I'm going to go back to our dark red. I'm going to definitely get around those edges. The only thing that I really see here that I really want to change is that I want this edge to be darker. So I might get something that is darker to do that edge with. Might. I don't know yet. I mean, I do like, I do. So. What you're doing is you're making sure the edges are really dark, especially up here, definitely down here too, because you're making it look as if it's three dimensional and there is no light hitting the sides of your gem because it is perpendicular to the page, supposedly. That's what you you want your eye to think, is that it is perpendicular to the page. Oh my, I'm sure you could hear that thunder. And I think what I want to do is grab a purple. This one is mauve. And I just want to make this edge a little bit deeper in color. And give it just that extra boost of contrast. Ta da! If you want to go back in and, you know, smooth out this some more, blend it some more, you can. Make it the perfect gem. If you want to use white even, you could go in here and make that really pop with some white if you wanted to. I'm not going to because I really like it like this. And... Hold on just a minute. we got to find one of my white pens. got my white jelly roll here uh, this is one of my favorites to work with is the I don't know if you can see it or not but it is the there it is the jelly roll it's the 08 Sakura is who it's made by and it's raining so ridiculous right now And then I'm just going to go up here, kind of come around with my highlight. So remember your highlights always follow your edges. My gel pen is not, it doesn't like me today. I think my others have run away, so. Oh my lord. As you see, mine don't always come out perfect. And then, since my gem goes down a little bit, this will go down. And then, I think I'll have one coming up and around here. Why I do these little ones? Well, it's just because, you know, there's going to be other light sources and whatnot around. There's not always going to be, like, one single light. 
but if you do one single light, it looks good too. I just think it's me doing it the way that I normally do it. If I can get this to stick, that would be great. Now, I just did some other gems back on the 1st of June, which was actually my birthday. It was really, really cool. I uh, was sick, so I got to sit on the couch all day. But I did, of course, gems because, you know, you have to gem even when you're sick. And I used, instead of the ink tents under it, I used... Um, the Stadler fine liners and I did like little patterns under it and then did those and that was there was a blue one and a red one that I did and they're really cool but this is the one with that I did with the intense ones and I really like it with these um, as you can see I didn't actually blend with any kind of spirits or anything just with the paper stump and I still like it because it gives it a texture. Can you see all the texture? It's super cool. And this one, obviously, I blended. So that's the only real difference between those. And maybe I and I don't think I used any of the other colors. I just used dark red on the other one. But I think it comes out really, really pretty. And I like it. And I really hope you do some. And you throw them all over our gem group, gem hose. And I hope you like the tutorial. Yay. I will see you next time, dears. Bye.